Suddenly, the man began to actively call out to the princess. The girl ran with all her legs and apologized at the same time. The girl ran into the palace. She apologized to the guys and asked them nicely to let her in. The men did not cross her and let the girl in. She was obviously pleased with their obedience. After that, the girl entered the hall, where there were already several people at one large table. The girl wondered why they had summoned her so suddenly. It was Princess Melody Norbella. The girl admitted that she had to try hard enough to find them. There were several men sitting at the table. One of them was Prince Kaizen as well as Crown Prince Nigel. The Principal Demos was also present. Suddenly, Prince Demos lost his temper and started yelling at the girl. He told her to get out of here and wondered who even allowed her to come here. The girl indifferently replied that he had been yelling at her all year, and so he could have come up with something new in that amount of time. The girl inquired why she wasn't allowed, and he was. Prince Demos explained that she was just a maid's daughter, who had reached the status of princess, and she should be thankful for that and not behave like that. The girl knew that His Majesty would immediately get angry at his brother when he spoke like that, but it seemed that only Prince Demos still didn't realize that. The man was very angry that the girl was so careless to call him her brother. Then the girl allowed herself to sit down at the table with the others. The girl said that just yesterday she had seen her brother, he had gone for a walk. The girl also added that the carriage had a yellow circle on it. Prince Dimos got excited and asked the girl when she had time to see his carriage. Then the father inquired of his son if he was gambling again. It was Emperor Urbash. He invited his daughter Melody to sit down. The girl responded by promising to be quieter than the grass. The kingdom of Orson is growing by leaps and bounds. This was shown by the recent brutal war on the eastern borders between them and the Corbel Empire. The Abub Mountains are there, separating the countries like a wall. And nothing serious has ever happened there before. One of the men present believes that the kingdom of Orson has arranged a political wedding with the kingdom of Xerox, and they are now allies. The man also added that successful decisions are extremely dangerous now. He turned to his older brother to explain that if they continue to tolerate it like this, the consequences could be dire. Another man then suggested that a political engagement might help them. He appealed to His Majesty to consider an engagement from the Aizen Empire. The girl had worked very hard all year, all for this moment. She was simply in anticipation. Then her father asked the girl why the princess's eyes glistened so much. He confessed that Emperor Aizen had proposed an engagement to one of the princesses. The girl, not wasting any time, spoke up by volunteering. She confessed that she wanted to marry him. No one present was sure if the girl knew the meaning of the words, political marriage. Demo spoke up again, saying that they couldn't send a crazy person like her there. The girl was angry that her brother called her crazy. He tried to explain to His Majesty that they would be laughed at if they sent her. But the girl stood her ground and tried to explain and see the feeling that she really, really wanted to marry a foreigner. The girl thought this was her chance. But the man was notoriously tired of listening to their bickering. Those present noticed His Majesty's reaction and thought about stopping them. Suddenly, the man couldn't stand it and told his children to shut up now as they had turned the imperial family meeting into a circus. The man told his son Demos to get out of his sight. He told the girl to do the same. The princess noted that Duke Ernest Weddle remained calm even now. Before leaving, the girl once again repeated that she wished to enter into a political marriage. After that, she went out and decided that it was necessary to tell Claire about everything as soon as possible. The maid asked the princess if everything had turned out as she had planned. The princess answered in the affirmative. The maid admitted that she had no doubt. The princess in turn added that it was all thanks to her brother Dimos. The girl revealed that no one would risk calling her abnormal in front of her father, except him. The girl confessed that she had been waiting for this for a year, since now they wouldn't be allowed to go to another country. Claire Poe asked her mistress what she had done in all this time. The girl told her that she had done so much that now no one would want to marry her, and all because she wouldn't want to be sold to another country for anything. The maid picked up her mistress's closet and also asked her to return home before dark, otherwise she might meet a ghost on the way. The princess asked the maid to stop talking nonsense. The maid clarified that she meant 
that then the mistress would definitely get in trouble. She shared that the captain of the guards had obviously realized something, as they had even increased patrols on the walls. The maid noted how hard the guard captain was working. The maid knew that he was a servant of the people, and then suggested that the girl wear a special outfit. And the princess thought about how nice it would be to gather the entire imperial family for dinner, if they were on good terms. The girl thought that then they would solve their tasks faster. The princess realized that if she left now, her brother Demos would start arguing again. In any case, the girl promised to return soon. The maid waved the girl back. Still, the maid felt sorry for her mistress's hair. Melody Corbella intends to become the mad flower of the empire. The first thing she did was cut off her hair, and later she pulled up her pants. Then, the girl realized that, having lost her femininity, she gained freedom, and now she can often be seen lying on the grass. The girl can also run to the manor out of the blue, so they try their best to ignore her. The girl thought about how she liked the pants the best. She was glad that the belt didn't need to be tight either. The girl decided it was time to reap the fruits of her labors and listened to her brother Demos call her crazy. Suddenly, the girl saw a crowd of guards. Then the girl turned to a man named Sir Robble. Kaiser Weddell was a tall man with short blonde hair. The girl immediately noticed his marvelous face. She had also heard rumors that Princess Daisy had fallen in love with him at first sight. The girl thought that she felt sorry for this girl because she thought that this man was only suitable for her. The young man asked the captain if he had heard about today's meeting. The young man also added that the emperor was so angry that he broke the table. The girl heard everything, even though the man didn't notice her. Afterwards, she came out to greet them. The girl introduced herself as Melody Corbella. The man said hello in return and introduced himself as Kaiser Videl. Looking at the man, she thought that this was her best bet. The girl politely informed him that it was a pleasure to meet him, and she would have loved to shake his hand, but decided that for now, they should stop here. And before she left, she told the man that she hoped they would see each other again. When the girl had already moved a couple of meters away, the young man told Kaiser that maybe the girl had some rare disease. It got to her hearing, and she decided to turn around and inform him that she had actually heard everything. She also explained that she didn't have any disease. The young man was immediately ashamed of his expression. He didn't understand how the girl had heard everything from there. Melody decided that she would forgive him for today and left. The young man was already starting to worry that the girl would retaliate against him for this, but Kaiser reminded him that the girl had forgiven him. The girl was looking at the new statue when suddenly the butler came up and said that everyone was expecting her. But the girl was too mesmerized by the statue and said she hadn't seen it before. Then the butler came to inform again that His Majesty was waiting for her. Then the girl looked at her watch and thought that time was flying very fast. On the way to His Majesty's house, the girl thought about how she felt very embarrassed every time she acted like this. But she had no choice, so she decided to go for a run. The butler, watching this, was only thinking about where the girl had learned to run so fast. The son simply asked the woman if there was any news, but she gave a negative answer. It was the Empress of Roche Valhalla Corbella. Nosha commented that this girl couldn't do anything right and sipped from his glass of champagne. He was angry that Melody was keeping everyone waiting. Just as suddenly, a girl burst into the room and apologized for her tardiness. The girl decided to justify herself by saying that she just overslept. His Majesty Urbash has two empresses as well as seven children. Empress Matilda gave birth to Crown Prince Nigel and Princess Rose and Empress Roche gave birth to Deimos and Kaizen, as well as Princess Daisy and Lily. Three years ago, Princess Lily left the palace for a political marriage, and it would seem that there are no problems in the family, except for one minor interference. The girl, sitting down at the table in a hurry, said that she realized that no one could eat without her. She was very hungry and asked for her food to be put on already. The girl greeted Rose sitting next to her, as well as Daisy. She noted that the girl had very soft skin. Melody didn't forget about Empress Matilda Boven Corbel as well. The young man said that she was already late for an important meeting, so she decided to put on a show again. The woman said that the young man was right. She said that the meeting was for the most loyal and trustworthy people in the palace, and this morning, 
the girl had completely derailed it, and Deimos had been kicked out because of her. The emperor had decided to try and end the argument, but the girl had decided that things couldn't stop now. She really wanted her brother Deimos to do something stupid. As it happened, the young man lost his temper and yelled at the girl for showing up here and ruining their family dinner. The father couldn't stand it and yelled at his son because it was the second time he had ordered them all to stop. The man informed Melody Corbella that he had put up with her antics for a year and warned if she ever interfered with their gatherings again. He swore he would send her out of the palace. The girl decided to change the subject and asked her father what he would say about a political marriage. Then the man couldn't stand it and ordered the girl to get out. He was so angry that he broke the glass with its contents and told his daughter to get out now and to forget about the damn idea once and for all. He promised that he would never forgive her if I said one word about it at night and also ordered her to never again float at his subjects' gatherings. The girl took offense and ran away. Before he left, the emperor told the girl that he would never marry someone like her. Mentally, Melody thanked her brother Deimos because of his uncontrollable aggression. The woman told her daughter Rose that she could go to dinner. She asked her son to stay here. The son noticed that his mother was not hungry and asked her for a snack at least. But the woman was not hungry. The woman thought about the fact that the Azen Empire had offered a political marriage and his majesties were not going to reject the offer. The woman realized that his majesty is very eager to marry off his daughters, specifically to foreigners. But in essence, he's just selling his children. The Azen Empire is a country of savages riding wild horses. The woman told her son that they would have to give someone up for an engagement to the Azen Empire. And if she had to choose who to send, she would send Melody first. The woman admitted that if she were the emperor, she wouldn't have given her away in marriage. Rose was a year older than Daisy. Three years ago, Lily Corbella had only been given away in marriage because she was the eldest. The Empress realized that if the Emperor didn't choose Melody, then he would give them her daughter Rose. And the woman really didn't want that. The woman didn't understand why exactly the girl had changed so drastically. Melody told her maid that she needed to rest, also adding that she didn't have time for dinner. The maid didn't know so she made sandwiches for the girl. The maid thought about leaving her mistress as she was thinking about something. Melody reflected on the fact that Rose was 22 years old and Lily was 21. Accordingly, she is also 21. Such an age is the best time to get married. The maid Claire had informed the girl that his majesty was not going to give her away, but the girl thought otherwise. She knew that could be seen even in the names as all the princes were named after gods. Melody's brothers were named Nigel, Deimos, and Kaizen. And if you look at the princesses' names, they sound simple enough because they were named after flowers and music. However, the girl knew that her name didn't exactly match her skills. It all started with her half-sister Lily's engagement party. The night she left, the girl couldn't stop sobbing. Melody noticed that Lily left the empire with red eyes. The girl realized everything when she saw her goodbye to her. Melody was angry that even an extremely powerful family couldn't prevent it. The girl knew that she should be next. She realized that she had no influence at all to make a difference. So if her family decided to marry her off to a foreigner, no one could stop them. Then the girl decided that since she couldn't prevent the engagement itself, she would make sure that they wouldn't even think of marrying her. And after three years of work, and this madness had paid off. Melody mentally apologized to Rose for being sent to the Azin Empire. Even though the girl had still managed to avoid a political engagement, the wedding was still an issue. The girl thought about the fact that in the current situation, she simply could not be without a husband. Melody expected that the emperor would marry her off to some aristocrat. Then the girl began to think about who was most suitable for this role. She thought of the Duke's only son, the best graduate of the academy, the youngest captain of the guard, and the youngest swordsman. That was already enough for her to consider him the best man in the empire. Melody thought that the best match for her would be Kaiser Weddell. The girl even drew a picture of him. A servant girl noticed this and asked if her mistress liked him. Melody replied that he was the best man in the empire and he had every chance of being her husband. 
Melody knew that Nigel had to keep an eye on Empress Roche and that Daisy and Kaysen were not planning a wedding. The girl realized that if she was sent to the Azen Empire, Rose would definitely marry Kaiser. The young man told Kaiser that the Azen Empire had sent their lion here. The man had expected that. The young man then inquired if the captain had come to visit the queen or to take a princess as a wife. Then the young man wondered who the captain would choose, Rose or Daisy. He decided that they would not consider Melody. The captain got tired of listening to this nonsense and told his subordinate to shut up since they were in the Imperial Palace. The captain also reminded him that it was time for him to learn to keep his mouth shut. The young man came to his senses and asked why the captain wanted a map of the palace. The captain ignored the question and asked his subordinate if they had increased the patrols and guards on the north wall. The young man replied that he was following strictly to orders and didn't understand why they would reinforce the defenses exactly where Princess Melody's palace was located. The captain explained that the guards had noticed someone running outside the city at night and coming back in. The man admitted that he had felt the signs of the flow. The young man then asked his captain if he was sure of this statement. The man gave an affirmative answer. The young man then promised to alert the patrol and the captain decided to follow up personally. The girl, donning her cloak, entered the trade guild. Upon knocking, she was invited to enter. At the table sat a man who told the girl that he was glad to see her. The girl explained that she hadn't stopped by in a while, as it was always hard to get to. She came in to inquire how her uncle was doing. The man replied that he was doing great and also remarked that the girl was looking more and more like her mother. The girl replied that even in her uncle she sees her reflection. The man decided to take this as a compliment and then offered the girl a cookie. Then, the girl decided to cut to the chase. She informed her uncle that she had succeeded and Rose was going to the Azen Empire. Her uncle replied that this was great and asked if there was any news in the Orson and Xerox kingdoms. The girl replied that everything was calm for the time being. The man suddenly wondered why Melody was worried about that. The man didn't understand why the girl needed information about different countries. If she wasn't going to be sent to another country anyway, they wanted to send her to another country in the future, since the Empire didn't expect anything more from her. Plus the girl is also spending her mother's inheritance on it. Melody explained that she does it for the peace of the Empire and the greatness of the family. The uncle was surprised by such words. The girl repeated that she wants the Empire and their family to live happily. But for some reason, the man for some reason believed it faintly. Then the girl thanked her uncle for everything and asked if he would accept her investment. The man replied that if it were his will, he would take everything away from her. After that, the girl was about to leave. Suddenly, the uncle called her again. The man said that he would really try to help her. The girl thanked her uncle and said that she trusted him, after which she left. The man looked at Melody from the window and thought about how she was becoming more and more like his sister. The girl had told Geralt that if that was what they wanted, she would gladly marry and do absolutely anything to protect their family. The Emperor married Jabril's sister and paid all the debts in the family. Abub's clan became free only because of her sacrifice. The girl asked the Herald to protect her daughter Melody. The girl said she had taught her love for Mount Abub and this country. After the man indulged in reminiscing, he was once again convinced that Melody was just as smart as his sister. He was also worried that the girl might get into trouble during these escapes from the palace, just as suddenly someone injured the girl. The man looked down and thought about the fact that there were now many more guards on the wall. The girl didn't even realize it and thought about the fact that all she had to do was move. She expected that there would be a changing of the guard now. So the girl decided to waste no time and began to crawl up the wall. Because the wind was picking up, she couldn't hear what was going on upstairs so she figured she'd have to skip. But when she climbed up, she ran into a guard. It was Robel Rucci. Then, the young man instinctively attacked the girl. She realized that he was attacking with the intention of killing, so she decided that she should run to the palace and hide. Just as suddenly, the young man started shouting that there was an intruder here. The girl still managed to escape from him. She already thought that all that was left was to get there, as suddenly another guard appeared. He presented a sword to the girl's face. 
It was Kaiser Weddell himself, and the girl didn't understand where he had come from. She realized that she had no chance against the Swordmaster, but assumed that with the flow, it might work. The girl saw the man open up and figured she should be able to slit his throat now, but in the end, she was wounded. She thought about the fact that she shouldn't have set herself up to be hit. The girl realized that she had no choice but to use the flow, after which she was able to escape, but she didn't have much time, as it could only set for a minute. Melody could barely stand on her feet anymore. She was trying to make it to the palace as fast as possible. The princess was spotted by her maid and ran to help. Melody thought about how lucky she was to be alive right now and then passed out. Claire's maid was crying and begged her princess to wait. She decided to help her with a spell. Melody tried to explain to the maid that she was fine and also explained that the flow had already stopped working. But the maid assured the girl that that was not the problem right now and also informed her that her wounds would heal very soon. Then she took the girl's cloak and threw it into the fireplace. There was blood left on the maid's hands, so she ran straight to wash her hands. When the captain and Robel came to their senses, they realized that it was a flux. Flux is the ability to harness the inner strength of humans and the forces of nature. The young man asked the captain what that ability was and also assumed that the man they had attacked had simply vaporized. The captain thought about the possibility that the stranger might have killed his subordinate Robel, but stopped for some reason. When the young man wanted to report the culprit to the palace, but the captain assured him that it was too late and asked if he had wounded him, as then they would have a chance to find him on the trail. The men found drops of blood and assumed that this was where he had fainted. Only now did Kaiser realize that this was Mistress Melody's palace. The young man informed the captain that the tracks cut off and there was nothing else. Robel assumed that someone in the palace was in cahoots with him. The captain then decided to speak to his majesty personally. At this time, a maid was watching them. She prayed they wouldn't find anything. The captain reported everything to the emperor. He asked if he had engaged the intruder. The man answered in the affirmative and explained that someone had entered the city through the northern wall. He also added that so far they had lost him, but he couldn't hide far as they had wounded him. The emperor was shocked when he heard about the north wall. The emperor then wondered how badly the intruder had been wounded. The captain didn't understand what with the emperor's reaction. He explained that the intruder was bleeding. It was also a flux user. The captain felt as if the emperor was worried about the intruder's condition. Then the emperor ordered everyone to leave except the captain. The maids obediently bowed and then left the room. The emperor asked Kaiser Weddell to stop the investigation. The man was shocked by such a statement from the emperor. The maid asked Mistress Melody if she needed to call a doctor, but the girl assured that she just needed to rest for a while, after which the maid left. The other girls were discussing amongst themselves that it looked like their mistress had hurt herself somewhere. They also noticed that Claire was very tired this morning. Just as suddenly, the maid met with Kaiser Videl himself. He said that he needed to see the princess and asked the maid to inform her that it was Kaiser Vettel who had come to see her. The maid explained to the man that the lady was not feeling well at the moment, so she would not be able to see him today. The man then asked her to tell him that he would stop by next time. The man accepted that he could not force the girl to meet him if she was ill. In response, the maid wished the man a good journey. After Kaiser left, the maid servants began to whisper that he had stopped by to see his mistress. The maid informed her mistress, Melody, that Mr. Kaiser had stopped by to see her again. The girl realized that this was a complete nightmare. Melody asked the maid if she would have turned him down twice if she were in her shoes. Then the maid noticed that the girl was feeling much better and suggested that she meet him anyway. After all, he would still come again, even if the girl chased him away. Melody realized that there was no point in keeping quiet anymore. Her strength was already about half recovered. Then Melody asked her maid to choose a dress that would not harm her wound. The maid was very surprised and suggested she wear pants after all. But Melody explained to the girl that the best man in the empire should be met in a dress. The girl realized that her wound had not yet healed, so it was necessary to cover it. Just as suddenly Princess Melody entered the room and Mr. Kaiser was struck by her beauty. The man greeted the princess. 
He thought about the fact that did Princess Melody always had such a calm gait. He noticed how the girl kept her back straight and made minimal movements. The girl greeted Sir Weddell in return. She became worried that the man had noticed, as he was now examining her as if she were her future fiancé. Then the man asked the girl to sit down. She began to feel very hurt. She became worried that her wound had opened up. The man noticed this and asked if the girl was all right, as she looked quite tense. The girl replied that she was just slightly unwell. She realized that Sir Kaiser definitely suspected her. Then the man decided not to pull the cat by the tail and asked if she had been near the North Wall recently, but the girl replied that she had never been there. Then the man wondered if she had seen anyone suspicious in the palace. The girl again gave a negative answer and wondered what was wrong. She didn't know what to do when a man stared at her like that. Even if he wasn't sure if the girl was the culprit, he couldn't take off her dress to see the wound. The man simply thanked the girl for answering his rude questions. The girl assured the man that everything was fine, after which she removed herself. She expected everything to go fine. Melody thought about Robel being a real rascal. Then a maid entered the room and asked if her mistress needed help getting up. The girl wondered how her mistress's meeting with her future husband had gone. The girl replied that it was a complete nightmare as he thought she was a criminal. The girl wanted to marry him but didn't know what she should do now. Then Melody decided that there was nothing left for her to do but to seduce him. The maid noticed that the mistress seemed to be preparing for a fight. Melody asked the maid if the palace was quiet now since no one should suspect her. The butler had come to check on her condition yesterday. The girl was very worried that her father knew that she had used the flow. The maid looked her mistress over and reported that her bones were not broken. Melody responded by thanking Claire for helping her. The maid explained that keeping their mouths shut was their job and asked the girl not to worry and to just be careful. She also informed her of the emperor's orders. The girl pulled a letter out of the envelope and informed her that the emperor had ordered the mistress to rest at home. While Melody was recovering, His Majesty had decreed a political engagement involving Rose. She would be officially sent to the Eisen Empire, and also the date of Rose's departure was chosen rather quickly, and there were only two days left before the shipment. The maid noticed that it had been a long time since her mistress had dressed up so beautifully. Melody explained that her father had given her the dress, so she decided to wear it. The girl shared that she felt like the dress was going to fall off her, and she also suggested that she pull her hair out and do her hair up high. The maid informed her that pearls would go very well with this look. As she entered the palace, the girl thought she should get something to eat first. When the butler saw Princess Melody, he was amazed at how beautiful and elegant she looked. She asked the butler not to make any noise, as she would not be here for long, and after that, she would leave. The girl saw the empty smiles of everyone present. They were people blinded by power, ready to slander each other. She found it disgusting. The girl resigned herself to the fact that she seemed destined to share the evening with these hateful rich men. The young man discussed with his father the fact that his majesty had brought some obscure girl to the palace and then appointed her princess. But the woman had expressed that she didn't care about the appointment, and neither did Melody. But the son didn't realize who his mother was talking about until he looked at Princess Melody. He thought it was like she was a completely different person, and she looked much calmer with that hairstyle. Then he thought it was the dress, just as suddenly Rose appeared with her father, the Emperor. He was leading her to the wedding. Melody just watched it all quietly. She thought about the fact that she never liked to attend such meetings, although she could have. The girl knew they weren't that hard to get into, but she just didn't want to hear things she didn't like, so she never attended. The same thing happened when her mother was still alive. She and her never showed up at events like this. Then the girl decided to switch her thoughts and forget about it. As a good day, you have to think about good things. Besides, she decided that she should get ready since the protagonist was already here. Suddenly, someone called out to the girl. It was the emperor, he called his daughter to come over. It wasn't the first time Melody was dressed up like that just because of her madness that for the last year, everyone had forgotten what she was like before. The emperor introduced his daughter, Melody Corbella, to Duke Weddell. The girl didn't understand what her father was up to, but decided to play along so as not to upset him. 
Today was the first time they greeted each other. The girl introduced herself. After that, thanks to the delegation of the Azen Empire, she would be able to escape. The girl realized that these celebrations were no fun at all. They always upset not only her, but also her mom. The girl tried to force herself not to cry when remembering her mother, as today was the day to celebrate Rose's fate. Then the girl noticed that the guards on the walls were weaker because of the celebration. Plus, Kaiser Videl is celebrating with everyone in the palace. The girl thought now would be a good time to go get some cookies. The man thought about the fact that the intruder hadn't shown up in about a month. He thought that it coincided with the time of Miss Melody's illness. Also, the intruder gets elected to the wall very often. The captain thought that since there would be few guards today, it was perfect timing. Suddenly, he spotted this same intruder. The man didn't have time to react as he immediately went somewhere else. The man was surprised that he jumped so easily from such a height. The captain realized that if he went through the door, he wouldn't catch up in time. He wanted to jump just like the intruder, but realized that he had never done such a thing. But he decided to do it anyway. When he decided that he shouldn't lose it after this, he says determined to catch the intruder. At this time, the girl was already thankful for the cookies. I didn't tell Melody to hurry up as it was going to start raining soon. He also wished the girl to be careful because the rain made the walls wet and it would be hard to climb. And also there were a lot of people. Suddenly someone pushed her. The girl realized that it was Kaiser Weddell. A few hours before this celebration, in honor of Rose's political marriage, the girl was wondering from Kaiser if he liked the opera. It was Princess Daisy Corbella. The man was watching Melody at this time while replying to the girl in passing that he didn't really like opera. Looking at the girl's reaction, he didn't realize what he had said. He was annoyed. Seeing that Melody had left, he asked Princess Daisy if he could leave too. The girl remembered her mother's words about trying to connect with him, but seeing that there was no way it was working, she gave the man permission to leave. Melody didn't understand what he was doing here. They crossed glances. Afterward, her uncle stood up for the girl and told the man to get away from her. The girl asked her uncle to let the gun go, explaining that it was her friend, but the uncle thought the man was too rude for a friend. Then the girl asked him to just put the sword down. She whispered in his ear that everything was fine and he had nothing to worry about. She also informed him that they had better not attract attention. The man agreed and asked the girl to be careful. Melody then suggested that Sir Videl speak elsewhere. When the girl and the captain were already seated elsewhere, she pondered how he could recognize her if she was wearing a cape. Melody noticed that he even had time to change his clothes since he was talking to Daisy in different clothes. The girl decided to start the conversation first and said what a coincidence that they had met so unexpectedly. But the man just remained silent in response. The girl decided to explain to Sir why she had left the party early. She said that she just wanted to see how the common people lived. But the man explained that he had seen her jump off the palace wall. That's when the girl didn't know what to say. She thought that maybe she should pretend to be drunk or pretend to be crazy. But then she changed her mind as she realized that in her plans, she still wanted to marry him. And if she did that, no one would want to marry a crazy person. The girl decided that she couldn't let anyone else know about it. So the girl turned to Sir Videl. She asked the man not to tell anyone. The man did not understand what she meant. Then the girl repeated that she didn't want him to tell that he had seen her and asked him not to tell anyone about it. And the man said he had some questions to ask and wondered if the girl would answer this time. The man thought she was very unusual. Melody said that even though she couldn't last time, she would tell everything this time. The girl thought about how such serious behavior was completely inconsistent with the Mad Flower nickname. The captain asked the girl if she was the person who almost got caught on the wall a month ago. The girl admitted that she was, explaining that sometimes she wanted to go outside. The captain then asked if she was hiding the fact that she could master the flow. The girl answered in the affirmative. The man then wondered why. The girl explained that it was her life and she would decide to whom and what to tell. Such an answer made the man surprised. Melody explained that she was considered the weakest and most insignificant person in the palace, and what would happen if everyone found out about her ability. 
Then she would suffer the fate of a pawn that would be used all the time. Then the man wondered if disrupting the meeting and cutting off her hair was also part of her plan. The girl confessed that she didn't want a political marriage and exile to another country since her home was here. The man admitted that he had been told she wanted to marry a foreigner. Melody laughed out loud. She admitted that it was just a way to sow chaos more spectacularly at the meeting. The man then asked if that was really what the rumors in the palace were about. The girl replied that if he was curious about what had happened there, he should ask Duke Videl about it, because he had been there. The man wanted to ask another question. He wondered why the girl went to the mercenary guild. Melody admitted that she went there for help, as her mother had connections there. The man wondered what kind of help. Then the girl asked the sir if he remembered last year's war with Orson, a surprise attack to be exact. The man admitted that he did remember. Someone had warned of the attack, so the damage had been less. Then the empire would have suffered great losses without that information. The man didn't understand how the princess knew about it. Melody admitted that they were the ones who had helped her get this information. The girl said that hiding in those parts and helping our army, they gather any information about the borders and neighboring countries. If the mercenaries were not near the borders, the damage would be enormous. But the man was still curious as to why the girl would want to know this. But the girl replied briefly that it was all for the long and prosperous future of this country. As a resident of the Carbella Empire, the girl wished her nothing but happiness. The girl admitted that she had done a little wrong, so she inquired how she could atone for it. But the man replied that it was not worth doing. Then the girl got up from the table and called the man with her. She wanted to show him something wonderful. Melody took the captain's hand then used the stream for a moment to show how the raindrops freeze in the air. The man noticed that the raindrops turned into motionless crystals, like stars on the fly. They looked like translucent water pearls. His breath was taken away by this beauty. He admitted that it was incredible. The girl said that this was the miracle. After that, she let go of the captain's hand. The man realized that it was the same skill she had used a month ago. The girl agreed but explained that there was a limited time to use it, and it was weakening due to energy consumption. The man then wondered what was wrong with the girl. Suddenly, he felt ashamed that he only decided to find out about it after a month. Suddenly, Melody asked the captain if he had any money right now. The girl explained that they just hadn't paid it yet. The girl said that since she had paid for her drinks, the captain should walk her home since the walls were wet. She wouldn't be able to climb over. Melody had to pay with her jewelry that the emperor had given her. The captain was surprised that the girl was climbing the wall with her bare hands. Melody suggested he try it too, but he explained that there was no other way, as they would not get through the main gate. So he came up with a plan to get the girl through the secret servant's passage. The girl said she would follow the man anywhere. The girl was glad that the captain would keep her secret. Looking at the girl, the man thought she had a wonderful smile. It didn't escape Melody's eyes, which made the man feel embarrassed. Then the girl decided to clarify if he was sure to keep her secret. The man admitted that no one would believe in a wall-climbing princess anyway. The girl agreed with that. Melody noticed that winter is already ending, and very soon, spring will come. And next spring, the girl wants to be Kaiser Weddell's wife. So the girl turned to Sir Weddell. She wanted to know if he himself determines his life. The man answered in the affirmative explaining that this is what most people do. Then the girl apologized, but the man didn't understand why. The girl thought about the fact that she had decided to marry him and didn't even ask his opinion. She felt sorry that he had suffered so much because of her. The girl came to her senses and admitted that she had run away from the castle today for those cookies. You offered the man a taste. He thought Melody reminded him of some kind of squirrel, but he said yes. The man realized that the cookies had some sort of floral flavor. The girl informed the captain that he could come to her if he wanted more. The empress noticed how Melody looked like her mother. Matilda and Roche are both empresses. The emperor only had one, and her name was Jibril. Well, it didn't matter anymore, because she herself only saw him as the emperor. And when her existence was hidden, she was no longer a threat. The woman never imagined it would be Melody, who would be the one full of subterfuge from a small age. The son didn't understand what his mother was talking about, as he thought she was nothing. He noticed that she had behaved normally at the feast, 
but that meant nothing to him. The Empress was once again convinced that there was no better bride in the Empire than her daughter Daisy. The woman realized that Duke Videl's family simply wouldn't accept Melody. When the girl returned, she asked her maid if it would be too rude to give a gift. The maid then explained that one of the princesses should be in that seat. Claire asked her mistress if she wanted to go to the Azen Empire instead. Melody immediately gave a negative answer. The girl apologized to Rose for being late. The girl replied that it was fine and invited her sister to sit down. But Melody didn't know what to say to her at all. She wondered if she should thank her or apologize. Then Rose noticed that her sister had brought a present. The girl had completely forgotten about it, but she promised to find a use for it and thanked her. They were earrings. Her sister asked if Melody wanted to wish Melody a safe journey or a good marriage. Rose suggested that she looked very sad, but the girl admitted that she was very glad that she was leaving for the Azen Empire. Rose confessed that she didn't hate Melody at all. Despite her bad reputation, short hair and clothes, she doesn't think she's crazy. Still, she wondered why she acted that way and why she went to her brother's reunions. Melody didn't think it was weird that she wore pants or said what she wanted to say. Sometimes she wondered why they were named after flowers and music while her brothers were named after gods. So Rose was glad she was going to the Azen Empire because the girls there wear pants and ride horses. The girl told her sister that she could congratulate her sincerely today. Melody wished Rose a happy life. She wanted her sister to be the bravest person in Aizen. Melody thought about how she had turned out to be a disgusting person. Rose wished her sister happiness in return, also advising her not to listen to what everyone else said. Three years ago, Melody hadn't told herself that if Rose and Daisy got married, she would be smiling and celebrating victory but she only now realized she couldn't do that. The butler informed the girl that His Majesty wished to speak to the princess. The girl came to her father. He noticed that she was depressed and asked if she was ill. The man suggested that she was feeling guilty because Rose was leaving in her place. The emperor admitted that if she hadn't wanted to leave, she could have just told him. If Melody had said that she didn't want to get married and didn't want to leave, he would have listened to her. But the girl highly doubted it since she had heard all sorts of things over the years to stay here, the girl couldn't stand it and cried in front of the emperor and said she had to go. The man realized that he was just a terrible father. He wanted to blame someone else for his mistakes, but just as long as it wasn't himself. The emperor couldn't remember when his daughter had stopped asking him for anything. He knew he had no influence on anything in the palace. The man thought about the fact that if Melody hadn't done all this crazy stuff, and if she had trusted her father, she would have been sold into marriage for sure. Even though the man had the power of the emperor in his hands, there was nothing he could do. And he was sad that his daughter no longer counted on him. He wished he had been with her mother when she died. The man realized that his suffering would end along with his life. Melody thought of her mother and thought about how pathetic she had become. She hadn't hesitated at all when she saw Rose off. She would end up living the good life for Melody now. Just as suddenly, a maid entered the girl's room. Melody inquired as to why she was up so early. The maid replied that, because the girl had fallen asleep during the night, she thought she was just about to wake up. Melody began to complain to the maid about how stupid she was. The girl admitted that she was tormented by thoughts of Rose. Claire tried to reassure her mistress, telling her that she shouldn't be in so much pain. Melody admitted that in three years, she had never once thought about Rose's future, and her sister smiled and wished her happiness before she left. She encouraged Melody and wished that she would live the life she wanted to live. The maid hugged her mistress. Claire said she wasn't bad, she just didn't have a choice. After Jibril's death, surviving in this harsh place had become even harder. But the girl couldn't tell her mistress everything. She just wanted Melody to hang in there and not lose herself. The maid explained that the princess, though half, was part of the Abub family. Claire said that the blue eyes were a reflection of a righteous and proud soul. The girl also added that her mother was the strongest warrior in the entire army, and Emperor Urbash had always remembered that. Though the maid cannot become her mistress's support in the palace, but she is sure that for Melody's father, the promise to Jibril is more important than her own life. After all, 
parents always loved their princesses. So Melody should definitely try to find a better life. Claire reminded her mistress that she has the right to take what she wants. Then Melody was curious to ask the maid if all the green-eyed family members knew how to heal body and spirit. The girl confessed that she felt calmer just seeing the maid. The girl confirmed that this was true and thanked her mistress. She also reminded her that it was time to sleep and asked her mistress to let her help her sleep. After which she began to conjure the girl. Claire wished her mistress good dreams. The next day, Melody realized that Rose had left with a smile on her face and it made her feel much better. When Melody saw her maid, she wondered if she was really the princess who had been sobbing all night. Just as suddenly, another maid came in and announced that the captain of the guard wanted to meet with her. Melody invited the captain to sit down and also asked what brought him here. The man didn't want to talk at first. The girl sensed a strange atmosphere. Then she assumed that the man wanted to confess his love to her. She began to think that she seemed very cool to him when she jumped off the wall, or he fell in love with her after she paid for the tea with her earrings. The captain spoke up. He said that since he was determined to keep her secret, he hoped she would listen to his request. The girl wondered what he was talking about. The man warned that his request was personal. He admitted that there were rumors that the stream had long since disappeared from the lands of the empire, and this was the first time he had seen it in person. The man realized he shouldn't ask for such a thing, and he admitted that he had given it a lot of thought. Melody couldn't take it anymore and asked to cut to the chase, then the captain confessed that he wanted to fight the girl in a duel. The dreams of love in the girl's mind immediately collapsed. She inquired of Sir Weddle if he suspected her of anything. The girl warned that if it was necessary for the investigation, she had to refuse. The man asked if the princess was hiding any information or planning a plot. Melody was angry at that, and she asked the man not to say such nonsense. She said that she wouldn't lie or hide anything. The girl admitted that she didn't even socialize much with nobles. Melody thought that the captain's suggestion had ruined her whole mood. The man added that his majesty had ordered him to keep the investigation quiet since he knew perfectly well who had slithered over the wall. The man said that on the day of the conversation, his majesty was clearly worried about the intruder. Melody asked her maid if she really needed to fight him. Claire only replied that she shouldn't have been racing up the walls. Then would her family get hurt if someone found out about the flood? The maid told her that His Majesty had only destroyed the records of the Abub family, and the existence of the Flux was not hidden yet. The girl said that if she didn't mention the family, everything would be fine. But mentally, she knew that everything would definitely not be fine. The peaceful abolition of the Abub family at the initiative of the Emperor had happened on paper. In reality, many of his closest subordinates had died in the process. It was because of this that the emperor's power weakened. Such was the gravity of Jibril's promise. Melody convinced herself to think positively. After all, they say that the body can solve any problem. The maid felt ashamed of her mistress's expression like that. Claire told Melody not to even think about leaving the palace now. This, on the contrary, made the girl laugh. Melody confessed to the maid that His Majesty knew that she was the one who had jumped off the wall. Then Melody began to worry if he also knew about the stream. The maid explained that even if he knew about it, he wouldn't use her. The maid told her princess that if she was angry with an opponent or didn't know something about him, there was nothing worse than asking herself and answering herself. Since she can't know everything anyway, Claire advised Melody to go and ask the captain. She reminded her that it was already time to be brave. The girl did just that. She approached Sir Weddle and inquired if he had already eaten. The man answered in the affirmative, explaining that he had already had a bite to eat. Then the girl invited him to the backyard, also adding that the maid had already prepared everything. The man wondered if the maid had saved her that day. Mello admitted that it was her, and also added that she knew about the stream. The man realized that Melody and her maid had known each other since childhood. The maid looked surprisingly young. The girl admitted that she had never attended night training and did not wield a long sword. Melody said that she had only learned to use a dagger and some things princesses know only in theory. But the man remembered how easily the girl had repelled many attacks and almost killed one of the best knights of the guard. 
Melody explained that maybe she just had a trained eye. The girl explained that she couldn't fight anyway. She then inquired as to what they would do. The man explained that he would defend himself and the girl would have to use flow. After that, he broke a long sword and handed it to the girl. Melody was pleased to receive a wooden sword from the swordmaster himself. The man motioned for her to begin. The girl concentrated and stood in a stance. Her blue eyes filled with fighting spirit, like the eyes of a tiger that would not let go of its prey. The girl began to attack. The captain was surprised at how fast she was. He realized that it wasn't the dagger, as it was ordinary, but her incredible speed. The man realized that he could only keep up with the girl by instincts. The man still managed to fend off her attack, after which the girl fell. Sir Weddle was frightened and immediately began to worry if the princess was all right. He realized that he didn't control the force because of her onslaught. The captain admitted that the girl's movements were so fast that even the guards wouldn't keep up. He wondered if it had to do with the flow that she herself did not know, as it was something she had had since birth. She explained that the flow through the body amplifies it many times over. He noticed that the girl's fighting style was rather rough. The girl replied that even though Sir Weddle is so handsome, that doesn't give him the right to be rude. The girl reiterated that she had never been in a sword fight. The man then asked Princess Melody if she would like to be trained in it. The girl replied briefly that the world would go crazy if she also mastered a sword. The girl thought for a second that it was up to her to decide what she wanted to do with her life. The man explained that if a person had the talent to overcome any obstacle, it made absolutely no difference whether they were a man or a woman. Then, Melody asked Sir Weddle, without a drop of embarrassment, if he wanted to marry her. The man did not take it seriously and replied that it was better not to joke with such a thing. The girl decided to agree and asked the man to teach her swordsmanship and then offered to fight as an equal. The butler greeted the madam. The empress asked the man if he was returning from Kaiser. The man answered in the affirmative and explained that he had returned home by midnight and was now back at work. The empress said that without the likes of Vettel, the empire would have come to an end long ago. The butler then remarked that the woman was lonely. The empress explained that she was just tired, even though he was born a good boy, but he had his father's temper. The empress sympathized with the future wife of such a cold young man. She realized that it was unlikely to find a suitable girl healthy and cheerful. By this time, Melody was already eating her lunch with both cheeks. Maid Claire asked the girl to take her time and wash it down. The girl explained that exercising wasted a lot of energy. Claire admitted that she had noticed that Mr. Vidal enjoyed training her, as he came every other day now. Claire wondered when they would have a lovey-dovey moment. But Melody explained that it was better to start with friendship first. Claire then explained that the mistress does whatever the captain tells her to do and advised the girl to pretend since he doesn't even need to touch her to train her. The captain's handmaiden asked him if the man was seeing someone, but the man gave a negative answer. Robel then confessed that he felt like he was seeing someone after all, as he was always going out. He also saw his master smiling to himself for the first time. He assumed that thinking about someone made him happy. The man became embarrassed and began to deny everything. But the handmaiden did, because it looked exactly like the truth. The handmaiden informed the captain that it was time for him to have tea with Empress Roche, but he agreed and informed him that he would be back soon. He inquired of the handmaiden how long it would take. The girl inquired of her mother if Sir Weddell needed to wait even longer for them. The Empress explained that with waiting grows a man's desire, and then he would be glad to see her. Only the girl wanted to object as her mother immediately told her to keep her back straight and keep her shoulders up. The Empress thought about what kind of man wouldn't fall in love with her beautiful daughter. She was sure that Kaiser Wedel would fall head over heels in love with Daisy and ask for her hand in marriage. He decided that if he took the initiative, neither the Emperor nor Empress Matilda would be able to stop them. Besides, they had a backup plan. The woman asked her daughter if she had recovered. The girl was immediately embarrassed by such a question. The Empress began to explain to her daughter that only the thinnest ladies are considered beautiful, and she should be as thin as possible. The woman told her daughter to cut back on her diet. The Empress wondered if she had ordered a dress for the New Year's ball. The girl gave an affirmative answer 
and explained that since her sister Rose would not have one there, she would go there with Nigel. The Empress remarked what a savvy daughter she had. She also informed him that they would have to cancel the reservation after all, because another princess would be going there this year. The man thought about the fact that making an appointment during her working hours and making her wait so long was not a good gesture. Besides, the Empress hadn't come yet. The girl apologized and said that her mother wasn't feeling well, so she came instead. The man replied that it was unfortunate and wished her a speedy recovery. The girl noted how kind he was. She decided to strike up a conversation and said that the weather had gotten warmer lately, apparently spring was near. Then the girl asked Sir Weddle if he had already had lunch, to which the man answered in the affirmative. Then the girl decided to ask him what the man liked in order to make some conversation, and the man was stumped by this question. Without realizing it, for some reason he thought of Princess Melody. When she noticed that the man didn't answer for a long time, she assumed that her question had confused the man, but Sir Weddle still shared that he really liked fencing. The girl thought about continuing the conversation, but she didn't know what to say. Then the girl began to think that he didn't like her because she had gotten fat. Her mother's words were lodged tightly in her mind. Then the girl asked the man if he wanted to ask her something too, but the man refused. Then he came to Princess Melody's house. When the girl saw him, she was very happy and even waved her hand. The girl inquired if the man had lunch. Sir Weddle gave a negative answer. Then the maid said that she would bring sandwiches after training. Melody was studying fencing, and she realized that simple practice of movements and techniques was no longer enough, since she knew all the basics. The girl was a little tired and offered to take a break and at the same time get a snack. The man wondered since the power of her flow can stop time, so how does it work? The girl found it hard to explain, as over time she mastered it as if it was like another hand. She also added that if one used the flow for evil, it would become a terrifying force. The girl explained that time doesn't stop. It just stops affecting her. You can't seem living creatures in this state. The girl admitted that she once tried to kill a mosquito and ended up being sick for a week. She explained that if she used the flux against people, she could get hurt too. The man didn't quite understand since the last time the girl had touched raindrops. Melody explained that she could touch raindrops and even snowflakes. The man then wanted to try touching, and the girl reached up to his face. She made sure she could touch him. The girl apologized to the captain for surprising him. The man replied that it was no big deal and turned away. Melody wished she hadn't started at his shoulder. Then the girl stood and decided to suggest that they continue practicing. On the way, she thought that she shouldn't tease Videl like that anymore. She didn't expect him to keep quiet. When the workout was over, the girl wished the man a good day and told him that they had a great workout today. But the man still couldn't move away from the girl's touch. Melody dressed up and the maid informed her that the Empress was expecting her. The girl thought about the fact that this was the first time the Empress would score her a meeting. After all, she had ignored her existence since her mother's death. Melody thought that the Empress had some kind of plan. The girl entered the room and greeted the Empress. The woman allowed her to sit down and offered her tea that boosted women's health and rejuvenation and thanked her. The Empress also prepared some for her as a gift. She said that it could only be brewed once as there would be no more effect on the second. Melody thanked Her Majesty again. The Empress suddenly noticed how calm the girl had become. She wondered why the famous Lady Melody was acting like this. The girl did not notice that she had become different, just changed her hair and clothes. And besides, she had attended one meeting. The Empress said that because of all this, the Emperor was on the verge of a breakdown, and apparently she was not ashamed of her behavior at all. Melody realized that there was no point in arguing with the Empress. So she informed the woman that she would think about it. The woman suddenly said that for her, Empress Matilda Melody's Empress was like family. She noticed that the girl had already reached the age of marriage and handed her an envelope with the candidates. Melody thanked the Empress for her concern, but mentally, she didn't understand what kind of kinship the woman was talking about if everything was already written on her face. The girl studied the list of candidates and realized that they were not bad men, but Kaiser was not among them. Then she realized that the Empress's intention was obvious. 
the Empress wanted him to be her daughter Daisy's fiancé. And Melody stayed away. The girl was sickened at the mere thought that Daisy might marry her potential fiancé. So she asked the maid why she had chosen this particular man. The maid explained that he was the most handsome man in the Empire. Melody laughed that off and said that the maid was right. The girl just wanted a quiet life, and it had taken her three whole years to plan for that. She decided that she wasn't going to let anyone get in her way. The butler told the princess to pass. She was in His Majesty's private room. The father greeted his daughter and also asked her to sit down. The girl remembered the maid's words that it was time to be brave. She realized that it had been a long time since she had met her father and had not noticed how quickly time flew. Then, the girl asked the emperor if he knew that she owned the stream. The man replied that if the girl wanted him to know, he would answer that he did, and if not, he did not know. The girl realized that the emperor knew about her escape from the palace, for it was he who had ordered the northern gate's defenses to be weakened a bit. Melody remembered the maid's words that even if his majesty knew, he would not use his daughter. The girl asked the emperor why he didn't tell her about it. The father replied that it was because her daughter had reasons from the bed to do so. The girl was surprised that her father really cared so much about her opinion. Melody wondered if that was why he was pretending not to know. The man confessed that he also hoped that no one else would find out. After all, his main priority is protecting his daughter. It's the least he can do for her. The man admitted that he had heard that she had been badly hurt and asked how she was feeling. The girl replied that she had made a full recovery. The emperor said that Sir Videl's actions were markedly different from his father's and advised him to always be on guard when leaving the castle. The father did not want his daughter to be wounded again. Then the girl mustered up the courage to confess that she wanted to marry Kaiser Videl and asked her father for help. The man replied that if he was to be considered as a future bridegroom, his only interest was fencing. The girl replied that that was why she had become his apprentice. The emperor was greatly surprised when he learned that she was learning fencing from him. The girl added that he had suggested it himself. But the emperor didn't like men thinking only about swinging a sword. Melody explained that the suitors suggested by the empress were not suitable. That was why she had come to her influential father. The emperor forced a smile at that. He remembered that she was the daughter of the emperor of the Corbel Empire himself. The girl said that the only problem was that Daisy also wanted to marry him. The girl wondered if she could even qualify for the position. The father explained that love was something to be protected and not to be conceded to anyone. The girl took her father's words into consideration and indicated that she would go. The father apologized to his daughter Melody. He was ashamed that he was not there for her when his wife was dying. The man realized that when the girl was only nine years old, she must have suffered terribly alone. The man realized that he was wrong. The girl couldn't stand it and cried. She shouted to her father to hug her when she said such a thing. Afterward, the man walked over and hugged his daughter. He realized that he had to take off the emperor's mask for his child's sake for once. He realized that he should have done it much earlier and apologized again. The empress then came to the emperor and informed him that the candidates for Daisy and Melody's groomsmen had already been gathered and handed the man an envelope, asking him to read it. The man noticed that Nigel had already been in the position of crown prince for six years. But because of the empress, Dima still hadn't tempered his ambitions. The Valhalla clan is known for its gold and silver. A quarrel with such a family would significantly harm the treasury. The woman was angry that the emperor still dared to keep Nigel as crown prince, but she came to her senses and realized that now was not the time to argue with the emperor and offered to forget about it. The woman confessed that she was worried about Princess Rose not being able to attend the New Year's Eve ball. After all, every year she and Crown Prince Nigel brought golden wreaths to the festivities. His Majesty reported that he would summon Melody and Daisy tomorrow to talk to them about it. The woman reported that Daisy was just about to get her dress ready, but she had a women's day in the morning. The woman reported that she was feeling very unwell this time, so Melody would have to do everything herself. She explained that this was the girl's first time having this, so Dimos and Nigel would help her. The emperor agreed to do just that. Just as the emperor thought, Kaiser was not on the list. The man realized that if the empress is the first to announce her wedding, it will be up to her to choose a groom. 
That said, she would need the support of the neutral side of Duke Fidel's family to do so. He thought that Melody was going to stop Daisy from marrying Kaiser. The man informed his daughter that a decision about her marriage would be made after the New Year's holiday. And the best he can offer the girl is to the Weddell family as a bride. For that, he will meet with Duke Weddell himself. He said that he would make a decision at the New Year's feast. In the meantime, he suggested that the Empress leave this topic as everything needed to be discussed with Empress Matilda. The Empress asked the maid to contact her brother. The woman needed to meet her brother urgently. At this time, the girl was thinking that no matter which way one looked at it, it was still strange. She didn't understand why Empress Roche suddenly allowed the girl to carry the golden wreath. The girl assumed that she was up to something, but she couldn't find the answer, and so she decided that she needed to hurry to the guild to get some cookies. Whereupon the girl scattered and climbed the wall, as it was the shortest way and the only way. She knew that the fortress wall rested against a mountain, so she assumed that she could climb up the rock and jump off the other side. Just as suddenly, someone noticed her. It was Kaiser. He asked the girl where she was going again. The girl was surprised by such a coincidence and decided to joke that fate itself was bringing them together. The man asked the girl why she had chosen this way of traveling again. She realized that the man was pretending not to hear her. The girl explained that official travel required guards and servants, and she could not come to the guild as a whole delegation. The man admitted that he couldn't turn a blind eye to that and inquired about joining the guild at all. The girl admitted that she wanted cookies. The girl looked at the man and thought he had a scary look in his eyes. Then the girl turned around and decided that she would go home since the man wouldn't let her pass. Then the captain volunteered to go there himself and bring her cookies. The girl was glad. The man asked her to bear with her for a while. Later, the man thought the girl was upset, so he made the promise and didn't even think twice. He hoped she didn't need to bring that cookie tomorrow. Then he thought that the girl might run away from the castle again at night. He wondered what this cookie was all about. So the man took his horse and headed for the entrance. The man knocked and they opened the door. But it was explained that it was late and no one was working. The man looked into the man's eyes and thought that only a princess had he seen such blue eyes. Then the man confessed that he had been asked to deliver cookies. Then the man realized what Kaiser was talking about. He informed that he needed to come to the blue door on the third floor. She also advised him to tie up his horse. The man assured that he knew how to find common ground with animals. Going up the stairs, the captain thought that this place was very strange. Suddenly, another man met him and asked him to come through. He noticed that someone else usually came in and asked if the captain had something wrong. But the man replied that it was nothing special. He added that the man was also ready to jump over the wall for cookies. The man said that he would now give a box for tomorrow. Looking at the cookies, the man thought that the girl was eating them instead of bread. Then the man asked the captain if he was free to leave the palace. The butler didn't understand what was even going on. After all, the captain had gone out on patrol, but had returned with such huge boxes. The butler inquired of the Cirrus what they were. The captain replied that it was all cookies. The butler was greatly surprised, as the man had never even eaten them as a child. In a curt manner, he informed him that he would carry them to the kitchen right away. But the captain refused and told the butler to leave the boxes in his room. The butler then assumed that the captain wanted to take them somewhere, but the man couldn't tell him what it would take for the princess. So he decided that he had to think of something. So he told the butler that he just wanted to give them to someone and asked for help. The butler had been working here for 35 years, and in this job, he always has to keep a reverent eye on things. Then the man realized that all these cookies were for one lady, and informed that a bundle of 20 cookies should be prepared, and also added that they should be cute and beautiful. The mother inquired of her son if anything had happened, for he had not been home last night, although before that he had always been at the palace. The man replied that he had some business to attend to, the girl looked at her son and thought that there was nothing real about him except his appearance. She was afraid that with his wife, he would be the same. Then she asked her son if he would leave after breakfast, but the man gave an affirmative answer. Suddenly, a butler approached the man. 
he handed him the bundle he had asked him to prepare yesterday. The woman was immediately surprised to see the bundle decorated with a bow and pattern. The man himself didn't expect it to look so nice. Then the woman asked who it was for. The man was embarrassed to answer, so he said he had urgent business and decided to leave. But the woman asked the butler, and he told her all about their son bringing in a lot of cookies last night. The father said it was probably some kind of volunteer work. The woman didn't believe it because the bundle looked like a gift. She explained that he hadn't really dated anyone, so he didn't notice the obvious. It was strange to the woman that he was going to give the girl cookies. She assumed she was from a poor family. After all, it could have been clothes or jewelry. The man informed her that His Majesty thought their son was an excellent groom. The woman agreed, but informed that they were still raising a cruel son, and if he was not satisfied with the marriage, the partner would be even more displeased. The girl saw the man and waved to him, saying good morning. The girl noticed how early the man came in and assumed he missed her. She saw that the man was embarrassed. She replied that his beautiful face was a treat to her eyes. The man decided to give the bundle to the girl without any excitement. But he didn't know if she would like the pretty bundle. He thought that if it was about this girl, the reaction could be anything. The girl was just coming down to the man. She asked him what he wanted after which the man silently handed the girl a pouch. She was surprised. How beautiful it was. The man was very embarrassed, but still he fulfilled his promise and brought the cookies. The girl was very happy. The man exhaled and realized that he was worried like a fool. The girl thanked the sir and said that it was just what she wanted. But the man replied that he was just keeping his word. But in the back of his mind, he thought it was a meaningful gift after which he was about to leave. The girl was very happy that now she had a lot of cookies. Before leaving, the man asked the girl to stay off the wall and just ask him next time. The girl was surprised that he didn't have a fight with the uncle who was giving it to her. The man fulfilled that this was the same man who had stood up for her back when they met, one of the first times. He replied that everything had gone well. The girl reported that she could now eat without any problems and apologized for taking up his time. The man assured the girl that everything was fine. The man spoke to the woman and realized that things were not going at all according to plan. The empress replied that they couldn't rush things anyway, because rushing could lead to war. The woman was angry because they were providing stability, and she didn't understand why the crown prince was still niggling. But the woman realized that getting rid of the young man wasn't worth it just yet though, and she would let Damos carry the golden wreath. Pomelo, after the New Year's celebration, would never marry again. The woman asked her brother what happened. He said that Prince Daimos is cruelly disobedient and also lacking in intelligence. He spends little time at the casino. The woman defended the young man and said it was because of Nigel, explaining that the emperor should just send him away. The woman thought there was nothing wrong with such a little hobby. The man was about to leave, but his sister asked him to still recognize her son Daimos. But the man replied that he would not make any moves for now. The girl realized that no one else was capable of it. The maid didn't understand what the girl was talking about. The young woman explained that only she could marry Kaiser Weddell. The maid noticed that the girl was always thinking about that. Claire asked Melody if she had really jumped over the wall again. She explained that she hadn't, and that Sir Weddell had brought her the cookies. The maid was surprised that he had done it personally. Melody also added that the chaplain had said that he would carry it for her because her uncle had given him a lot of cookies. Melody was glad that now they had an excuse to see each other. The girl hoped he had chosen such a bundle himself. The first emperor of Corbel had received the golden wreath from the sun goddess in the aerial gorge. According to legend, the goddess placed the wreath on his head during New Year's Eve celebrations. And now it is one of the most important holidays of the empire. The Crown Prince and Crown Princess go on an annual quest to find the golden wreath for the New Year's Eve celebration. If the current Crown Prince is unmarried, a princess takes the Crown Prince's place. Melody realized that since Rose is gone, the Crown Princess will be her. The first day, they have to spend the night at the camp, and on the second day, they will have to sleep right in the carriage. The girl's task is, together with the Crown Prince, to find the golden wreath on the Paulonia tree. The girl inquired of the maid if there was anything else she needed to know.
The maid added that the aerial gorge is a sacred place where silence must be maintained. The girl informed her that they had already prepared an outfit for mistress, and she would be able to change right before entering the gorge. Melody took all the information to heart. She realized that all this time she would have to watch her words, style and actions. She didn't understand what it was all for. And she had even been trained in horseback riding just in case. So she was completely uneasy. The girl resented why she had to sit sideways on the horse. The girl explained that all women ride on a slanted saddle. They can't ride the same way as knights. Melody was incredulous that only knights could sit like that. She said there was no way she was going to sit on a horse like that and ended up riding the horse as she was comfortable. The maids and butlers began to worry that the girl would fall off without a saddle, but the girl got along perfectly with the horse.